Higgs boson with the Atlas detector. And I wanted to make a joke with the, this very nice uh, view that we have, this landscape around us. But uh, so let's see if we can find a bump somewhere. Um, so uh, just a very brief reminder of the detector we are using. So the Atlas detector uh, is comprised by three big subsystems. Uh, the inner detector for tracking, which is around uh, pseudo rapidity in very central area, less than 2.5. We also have our calorimetry system, which covers the pseudo rapidity range and the mirror spectrometers. Um, so it's really nice to talk about uh, the perspectives we have for the future of LHC because this machine is really something outstanding in terms that if we look at uh, what we have been able to collect in terms of online luminosity, and here I'm just pointing the Atlas online luminosity monitors, but of course for all the detectors we see similar things. Uh, we look here in orange uh, how we are making in 2017 proton-proton uh, data taken. So uh, it's, it's the latest uh, plot we have. So we are really uh, rich in here in November, as we can see from the x-axis. So we already beat what we had in 2016. Uh, nevertheless, not only uh, we are reaching this very nice performance in terms of what we collect, I have to remind you that in terms of instantaneous luminosity, our design value is 1 times 10 to the 34. But we already reached a record last year in 2016, so we reached 1.4 then, so it was the peak we had. And then, Within one year, in 2016, we recorded uh, an integrated luminosity of around 14 verse femtobarns. Okay, so <coughs> let's say that's what LHC delivered, so this is what we recorded. Atlas was good at uh, almost 95% of the time. And uh, nevertheless, we have this very good performance. We are starting to have a challenge in terms of the pile-up <coughs> that we are facing. So uh, in 2016, we already reached around 25 uh, pile, uh, number average uh, number of interactions per bunch crossing. But we, oops, sorry. We already uh, had sometimes peaks of 45 to 50. So in 2016, we were already facing uh, a challenge in terms of pile up. But now, with the 2017 run, uh, I have to tell you that now, very, very, uh, uh, this is very, very early. Uh, uh, it happened <laughs> to November to the, the second. So we already reached two times the value of the design value. So it just tells us that, well, we should go really ahead. We are reaching a level of uh, uh, what we could call pre-stage of high luminosity LHC already because the detector is performing well, the, the, col the, the collider is delivering uh, very nice uh, proton beams for us, so we are there. So this is the motivation of this talk because even though I told you that we are um, having uh, problems, I mean challenges in terms of pile-up interactions, and I have to warn you that uh, expecting 4,000 inverse femtobarns at high luminosity LHC, we are going to have an environment of 1.6 vertices per millimeter. So this is already uh, stated, and uh, this is what we are studying in our uh, upgrade detectors. So we are, le we are dealing with this level of uh, pile-up. So if you look at this plot here, so this is uh, um, what we have in 2017 already in terms of average number of bunch crossings. So the average is 30.2 already. Because of this, let's say that uh, in terms of uh, physics results, 
we can summarize the ATLAS standard model results here in terms of the total production cross-sections, and all of them were corrected for the leptonic branching ratios, and they were all compared to the corresponding theoretical expect expectations calculated at next to leading order or higher. So, we, if we're talking about uh, Dihig searches, so let's take a look at the single Higgs here in this plot. Already in run two, we expect around two times the sensitivity uh, compared to what we had in run one because of the value increase of the production cross-section, considering, of course, the increase, uh, the increase of luminosity. So let's go for it. Uh, it's a key challenge in terms of measurement to dynamically understand uh, the Higgs potential. So this is the crucial piece for us to understand that uh, if the potential of the Higgs field has this form, we know that after a spontaneous symmetry breaking, we know that the Higgs field has, <coughs> has an excitation from the, the minimum value of its potential. And when that happens, it acquires masses. As well, not only the mass, but the cubic and the quartic interactions. So this is why it's important for us in terms of the standard model, this measurement is challenging. Uh, even though it's very important piece, we know that due to the in destructive interference between the gluon gluon fusion, uh, that is the main production uh, diagram for the LHC, we know that the production cross-sections are extremely small. So for 13 TeV, the calculations tells us that it's around 33 <coughs> uh, femtobarns, while for high luminous LHC, I mean at 14 TeV, it would reach 40 approximately 45. So uh, in this plot here, um, uh, we, sh we see how, what is the impact between the interference between the triangle and the box diagrams. Nevertheless, it's challenging in the standard, within the standard model. So what if we go further and try to look if there is anything beyond standard model in terms of this terra incognita? So that's the aim of this talk. If I would have to summarize uh, the beyond the standard model Higgs boson searches in Atlas, uh, that's what we would be looking for. I cannot cover all the analysis, of course. I'm going just to cover a small portion of Dihig's production and not all the channels, unfortunately. Uh, in terms of uh, the beyond standard model production, Atlas uh, is confronting uh, its searches looking at resonant X enhancement mainly uh, focused on the graviton and the 2HDM two models. So for the KK graviton, which is predicted in this uh, book random central model, uh, we would have an enhancement, which is a resonance here. Or within the node or within the 2HDM, we would be looking for the scalar heavy Higgs However, uh, there are other things around there. Uh, we expect what we call non-resonant enhancements uh, through uh, the picture of light-colored scalars or direct TT, H8 vertices, or some of the deviation of the triple uh, coupling constant uh, from the standard model value one. Uh, however, I'm not going, we are not touching all the beyond standard model Higgs Higgs production pictures, we are going to uh, explore just a few of them. In terms of uh, a summary of what we had uh, during run one, uh, I can summarize uh, the searches with this plot. So uh, from now on, uh, I'm going to omit the quark and lepton charges. So uh, during run one, we exploited uh, four channels, BB Tau Tau, 4B, 
And these channels, due to their uh, branching fractions, they are more suited for uh, higher masses resonance searches. Okay. However, due to the nice uh, uh, invariant mass resolution for the di photon system, uh, BB gamma gamma and WW gamma gamma are suited for this region uh, between uh, 260 and 500. And here, the granularity of the mass range is uh, wider compared with the uh, range from 500 to 1000 GeV. So if you look here at the, <coughs> at the branching fraction uh, 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 picture, we see that the most promising uh, would be uh, 4B, with 30, around 33% of branching fraction, uh, followed by BB Tau Tau. Okay? In terms of mass resolution for the di photon system, even though it's a clean signal, but for example, 4B, uh, I'm sorry, BB Gamma Gamma would be here, okay? followed by <coughs> Gamma Gamma WW that would be here. So even though branch infraction is low, we benefit from um, a clean final state. So these guys tend to be here. Okay, in terms of run 2 and here I have to apologize because uh, within <laughs> a couple of weeks, all of these results are going to be superseded. Um, so I'm not giving you the whole picture of run 2 results, but these channels are all being wrapped up with the full uh, run to data set uh, added to BB Tau Tau as well. So I'm going to show you 4B with a 13.3 inverse Fentobarns, uh, BB Gamma Gamma with 3.2 inverse Fentobarns. So this is solely um, uh, the first uh, quarter of uh, run 2, okay, and this is uh, partially of 2016 data and all 2015 data, and the same for Gamma Gamma WW. So, another way to summarize uh, the legacy of RUN1, uh, <coughs> if we remember that at ATV we could uh, expect a production cross-section for the dihex at the order of 10 fentobars, and this uh, calculation at NNLO, we see here, uh, in terms of the upper limit on the cross-section relative to the standard model prediction value, we see here the expected and the observed ratios, okay? I'm just pointing you this, uh, um, those values because they are going to be important for our comparison with the run two results. So let's talk about 4B. So this analysis, uh, is divided into the resolved regime, and here we can discern between the 4B JAT system. So here we can really resolve the analysis. Uh, and this analysis is uh, well suited for uh, what we call the low mass range. So we are prospecting here from 300 to 1,200 GeV for both resonant and here we confront the results uh, taking into account the resonant model for the graviton search and on resonant. So here, uh, uh, the analysis uh, relies on the selection of four anti-KT jets using the distance R parameter for the selection as 0 0.4. We uh, require they to be tagged and uh, the working point for the B-tagging efficiency we are using here is 70%, using TT bar as the, uh, the, the main uh, uh, modeling for this. We require the transverse momentum to be greater than 30 GV and the, that they are central. And one of the discriminants for the analysis that the we require that the Higgs-Higgs system is very, very central. And we select this based on, uh, on a cut of the four jet, uh, system, four jet system mass. On the other hand, uh, the boosted analysis, we cannot resolve between the 
the number of uh, uh, jets like we do for the resolved case, but here then we consider uh, fat jets. So the uh, parameter distance now is greater, 1.0, for the leading and subleading uh, uh, fat jets. And in each one, we require more than one B tag track jet. And the distance parameter for each one of these track jets is 0 0.2. But here we can increase a little bit the working point for the B tag inefficiency. And for this regime, uh, so we go further than 1000 GV. And uh, uh, we require also the, <coughs> the pseudo rapidity difference between the Higgs Higgs system to be very central as well. And here I just show the, the results very briefly. Uh, for the resolved analysis, we confront the, the, the invariant mass of the four jet system uh, with the two mass points of the graviton uh, resonance search, and we scale the standard model Higgs Higgs uh, value by 500 here. Okay, so it's important to see that the very um, the greatest challenge of this analysis is this overwhelming multi-jet background here. For the boosted, we also uh, select the two uh, fat jets uh, system, uh, invariant mass for both, uh, confronting here now uh, a greater value of the, the resonance we are searching for, which is the 2000, uh, 2000 um, mass point, GV mass point for both. And uh, here we select uh, uh, in the boosted analysis uh, the three tag selection, the minimum of three tags, and here uh, four tags inside the two uh, fat chat system. Now, for the resonant uh, limit result, uh, we see here the, the prediction of the graviton's model. Here there is this small bump, which is regarding the drop in the cross, the value of the cross-section at 300 GeV. And uh, fortunately, <laughs> no sign of uh, new resonances here. Whereas if we establish the non-resonant limit for uh, the standard model result, we see here that the ratio uh, compared to the standard model uh, cross-section is less than 29. Now switching to BB gamma gamma, for this analysis we select two photons within the mass window of 105 and 160 GeV and two B jets, okay? So the photons are isolated and here uh, we can increase the working point of the B tagging selection uh, because of the characteristics of the analysis. So we have a, a clean dye photon system, and so we can go further in the bit tag inefficiency without fear. Uh, in terms of dye photon vertexes, so all the events here for this analysis are required to have the primary vertex, which is consistent with a dye photon production vertex. Uh, we define different categories, which of course will depend on the number uh, of B jets in an event. So we create a contra region where we require zero B jets in an event. Two B jets in an event is our signal region. So we essentially work with the zero B tag category and two B tag category. And then uh, we veto events with three or more jets. So we guarantee that we are orthogonal with the 4B analysis. And here, uh, the analysis uh, shows that uh, essentially what we do, we do a signal plus background fit to the 0B tag and 2B tag regions. And uh, here uh, we uh, assume that the mass of the Higgs Higgs system wi is within, I'm sorry, the mass window of the Higgs system is uh, within this uh, resolution. Doing the uh, cut and count experiment in terms of the expected number of events for each one of the regions, the zero tag and the two tag, 
for the continuum background for the standard model Higgs and for standard model Di Higgs, this is what we expect in uh, the two regions. However, what we observe it in the zero tag is 27 events, whereas two tag, no, on, no observation at all. No bumps in terms of uh, resonance, and here we are looking for the heavy Higgs scalar in the narrow width approximation. In terms of the standard model, no resonance limit, scaling it to the standard model cross-section, we have a value that is less than 117. Now, switching to gamma gamma WW, we, make the, we require the same selection for the two photons as we do for the BB gamma gamma analysis, but here, now, we are requiring, <coughs> uh, as a final state, also two jets and zero B jets. And as a final selection, creating the same kind of uh, data-driven background modeling. We model our continuum diphoton background in the signal region, which is the one lepton category. And we estimate this using the shape of the photon invariant mass, which was determined using the sideband uh, fit from the control region. So it's essentially what is done uh, for BB gamma gamma. But here, uh, the main uh, uncertainty in terms of the systematics is this background model, so it responds for over 17% of the uncertainty of this analysis. <coughs> and in terms of the results, for uh, the cut and count experiment, uh, perform it uh, in a similar way as we show it for BB gamma gamma. We see here that now, uh, in terms of continuum background, standard model single Higgs and standard model Di Higgs, in terms of expected number of events, this is what we have, but we observe uh, 15, which indicates a slight excess. In terms of non-resonance limit, this is the value scaled to the standard model one. And as it was performed with BB gamma gamma, here for the resonance search, we used the heavy scalar with the narrow width approximation as well. But as you see, no sign of beyond standard model physics, no bumps. Uh, and now we switch to high luminosity LHC. Considering that this is the uh, well-known schedule of the collider and the upgrade of the detectors uh, within the time scale that started already in 2011, reaching 2030 almost here, okay? Um, I wanted to remember that, remember that in our second slide we were talking about the instantaneous luminosity peak that we already have. So we already reached this guy here, right? Uh, and for somehow, it was expected only during run three. So we are touching, uh, we are touching a pre-high luminosity LHC uh, regime. So in terms of what we have for this schedule, we know that the upgrades are vital uh, because we need to maintain their performance in this higher luminosity environment. And uh, as I said already, the main challenge is mitigate, not on the mitigate the impact of radiation damage, detector aging, and also we have to deal with the challenge of the pile up. In terms of Atlas detector, so we are going to have a completely new refurbished, uh, completely new inner detector, all made of silicon, and uh, the coverage will be extended to four. The calorimeters also will have new uh, high granularity uh, sections uh, instrumented in the forward regions, 
So the idea is uh, to deal with the pile-up in the high allergy uh, environment, but not only in terms of, uh, we do not only think about mitigating pile-up uh, with, the, with the calorimetry, but also thinking that we have to rely on the silicon technology of the new ITK detector, which is vital for giving us the information on the special uh, information, uh, the resolution, and also timing detectors for the pile-up. So these are vital for us to deal with this environment, as I expressed it, that is around, is expected around 1.6 vertices per millimeter. Uh, in terms of muon detectors, they have an extended coverage uh, to, to four in pseudo rapidity. And we are going to evoke the precision tracking now for early trigger decisions and increase the trigger acceptance by eliminating gaps. In terms of trigger and data acquisition, this is a summary of what we have. So now uh, we see that we have to provide improvements to preserve the high signal, signal and uh, acceptance in very high rates. So we are going to use high granularity measurement and tracking information, which is going to be done very early in the trigger. And remember that in each case, this, what we have now and for the high luminosity legacy upgrade, we are dealing with an input of 40 megahertz at level, at level zero just a glimpse of what we are already studying in terms of detector performance. So if we look at the B-tagging uh, uh, prospects for high luminosity LHC, compare, uh, assuming that we are going to have uh, an ITK detector completely solid, so this is the, the first uh, This is the ideal atlas detector for this, uh, with, with all its, uh, with, with, which is with its desire in terms of uh, capabilities. So with the IT key inserted, if we compare the BJET efficiency in terms of working points and uh, confronted to the light jet rejection, which is the inverse of the miss tagging here, we see that during run one, we can have around uh, a light 380 at 70% working point, and uh, at the level of 33 at 85%. Whereas, if we go further to, number, to the average number of uh, interactions per bunch crossing, which reaches 200, at a high luminosity LHC uh, environment. This is what we are having in terms of light rejection for the same working points. In terms of photon identification, considering this detector layout with IT key inserted. So in this case, for the photon isolation and identification efficiency, we can say that we the, this is the probability that a fully calibrated check jet from a hard scatter interaction will be misidentified as a photon. So, there are two ways we perform a prospects analysis for the high luminosity LHC. So, we can either uh, use a full simulate. Uh, I'm sorry. We can either use a parametrized performance of the upgrade detector, or we can extrapolate the run one, run two analysis. So these two approaches are going to be shown today. So <clears throat> have in mind that we cannot uh, guarantee full simulation for all the channels. So these are the approaches used. So in terms of the first approach, what we do, we parameterize the object level performance, but base this on full simulations. And the parameterization is essentially uh, um, is a set of smearing functions. And all these smearing functions, they include all the effects of resolution and reconstruction efficiencies for all the final states objects, 
uh, besides jet smearing, bit tagging efficiency, and pile up. And for example, I have already showed uh, some of the prospect studies for pile up. Uh, I'm sorry, for bit tagging efficiency, for example. Uh, and then we apply these smearing functions to all the generator level objects. On the other hand, we can we do not perform the analysis using the smearing functions, but we just perform an extrapolation. But here, the, the caveat is that we use exactly the same detector we have today. And then we have to scale the signal and background uh, to higher luminosity and center of mass energy with the detector we have today. So this was performed with a 4B, but then 4B uh, used the second approach. Uh, it extrapolated only the resolved results for the run two analysis. And uh, the extrapolation at that time was performed with 10.1 inverse femtobars of data that was collected in 2016. Again, the final discriminant of the analysis is the mass of the four jet system. And here we see how uh, it would scale uh, the, the, the limit in terms of uh, cross section to the 14 TV. Uh, energy that we are going to be reaching at uh, this regime and uh, scaling to the maximum uh, integrated luminosity. So this is what we see in terms of the exclusion limit as a function of the integrated luminosity. The exclusion limit is scaled to the standard model cross-section value. In red, the result with no systematic uncertainties considered, and here in green with the uh, current systematic uncertainties uh, used during the run to data. And these are the results. Uh, and the analysis extrapolated uh, different chat thresholds for <coughs> each one of the calculations performed, is performed in terms of the exclusion uh, in terms of cross-section and to the value of the triple uh, uh, self-coupling constant in terms of lower limit and upper limit. And then there were variations of the background systematics for this value. So this is the expected limit in terms of uh, triple uh, self-coupling. And now, switching to BB Gamma Gamma. So this approach, different from the other one, so this really uses uh, a parameterization of the ATLAS detector uh, with the upgrade uh, configuration, uh, taking uh, advantage of the excellent diphoton mass resolution and uh, the relatively small backgrounds uh, we have for the analysis in terms of single Higgs, continuum, and the, the other contributions. We show here the results for either the invariant mass of the diphoton system and here for the BB system. And the event selection criteria is very, very similar to what we already saw for the run to analysis. And then uh, with a similar technique in terms of uh, expected limits projection for the cross-section scaled to the standard model value so in, as a function of the triple Higgs uh, self-coupling constant. Uh, we this is a cut and count experiment, right? So this is the number of signal events, number of background events, and this is the uh, signal over square root of background that we would have for this analysis in terms of the expected limits on the triple uh, self-coupling constant. These are the, the limits. And now, almost my final remarks. We can summarize our results uh, looking at what we had in run one and what we achieved during the run two with this very partial results that I show it because, as I mentioned before, they do not contain the 36.1 inverse femtobarns of data uh, declared good for physics of ATLAS. Um, so 
we can say that we have a rich Higgs boson pair production search program. However, we haven't seen any sign of beyond standard model production so far. But I will uh, advise you to stay tuned because we have still more data to analyze. Not only because we are about to supersede these results with one more channel and all the other uh, results I showed so far, but because we are going to use the full run to data set to perform not only the individual uh, com uh, searches and uh, of course we are going to combine all these results. Um, we are expecting 120 inverse phantobarns, so we should go further. So please stay tuned because as I said, uh, we have BB Tau Tau coming soon, also uh, with high luminosity LHC prospects. And we are going to add to these searches two more channels, so they are in the final stage as well. And in terms of prospects, this is what we have um, in terms of the uh, limits uh, expressed at 95% confidence level. We could say that uh, the, achi the achievement of all the physics goals we have in the challenge of this high luminosity LHC environment, of course, requires major upgrades. And we can say that high luminosity LHC also signalizes exciting time ahead. I'm going to take a chance to paraphrase JFK because we choose to measure the self-coupling not because it's easy, but because it's hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we are willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one which we intend to win. Thank you. <laughs>